Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm gonna show you how you can render videos as someone requested in the comments. But if you want to learn how to create images inside Unreal, click on this button right here in the corner. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So I'm gonna work in this scene that I downloaded from the marketplace. I did some adjustments and I placed some cameras and um, yeah, it's ready to render. So first things first, we need to create a sequence. We're going to go into this cinematic tab and click on add level sequence. Then you're going to want to uh, save it in your content folder somewhere. I'm just going to make a new one and I'm going to say I'm going to I'm just going to say gothic then double click to open it and save it in there. So then your sequencer is going to pop up. So first thing that you want to do is you want to set up the frames. I'm just going to set it 24 cuz I'm doing like a movie scene. Let's call it that. Then from the track button, I'm going to click on it and actor to sequencer and I'm going to select my first camera. And you can see it popped in here and it created all these uh, frames. Okay, so I probably want to make this a uh, longer video. So I'm going to set here 0, 0500 to create 500 frames or so. I'm probably not going to use all of them, but who knows. Just going to drag this slider to somewhere around here. This is how long my video is going to be. And now let's set the first take, for example. I'm going to make it smaller as of now so I can adjust it. After you've done all the settings, I'm just which I'm going to do later. To add another camera after this one, another shot, you go here to the camera cuts, click on this plus button, new binding, and you choose the next one. And it will add it uh, next. By default, it will make it go up to the end of the film. So I'm just going to drag it more to the beginning. And then I'm going to click on the plus add my third camera, do the same thing, and then again click on plus, binding and actor three. Yeah, there we go. So now we have all the cameras set up here and you're gonna see that it will jump. I mean, you can't see it, but it will cut from this frame to the other one. And I'm not really sure how you can uh, make it appear on, on your uh, screen so that you can see in real time what are you doing but what am i doing is just select the for example this is my camera zero i'm gonna select camera zero and i can make all the adjustments and i can see them but then when i jump to the next shot i'm gonna have to again click on this perspective tab and choose the next camera so this is how it's gonna be. I'm not sure if there's any method that you can see the whole clip like in one. Let me know in the comments if you know that. Because I'm not an expert myself. But yeah, I'm gonna do all my settings and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, so I've set up my cameras and now what you wanna do is you wanna click on this, on this cinema tab to open the movie render queue. From here, you're gonna make sure that your sequence is enabled. And I'm just going to click on this unsaved config to open the settings for the render. And you'll probably end up with this. Delete the JPEG because we can't use it as it only exports uh, images, if you know what I mean. So we're going to use EXR, even though this will also produce images. But if we take those into a editing software, then from there we can 
put it all together in a sequence and the program will understand that it's a video not just some frames then you're gonna want to choose what rendering method are you gonna use the lumen or the path tracer i'm just gonna use uh, lumen on output um here you'll choose the save folder so it's cleaner if you have a an empty folder so make sure to do that and then you're gonna want to set the resolution i'm gonna put 1440 by 3440p here you can change the frame rate if uh, if you want even though here it's um, set you can this kind of overrides that so yeah i'm not sure if it works for example now i have 24 fps here and if it works to put 60 but um from more fps here it can definitely create uh, fewer fps in the output format so I'm just gonna leave it like that and uh, that's pretty much it here and we're gonna click on this plus settings button again and add anti-aliasing this is for our um, quality the quality of the video so I mean you should put these as high as you can I'd recommend something like 20 and uh, 40 or something like that but I'm just gonna do but with lumen it's pretty okay even if you put like 10 here and uh, 5 here and you need to click on this override anti-aliasing button I mean lumen looks good even not rendered so render obviously is gonna look better and the anti-aliasing method I'm leaving it to none but you can choose, for example, multi-sample anti-aliasing if you want or TSR, but I'd recommend leaving it to none. And also for animations, I uh, usually check this button for render warm-up frames. If I have like, for example, this snow here and yeah. Then make sure all of these are OK, click accept and then click on this render local button and your rendering will start. Now I'm going to click on my render button and I'll come right back to you. OK, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve. This is the editing software that I use for my videos and I know this has the tool that can turn those images into video. What you need to do is just create a new project and then from here the media tab you're gonna search for your folder where you saved the images but if I open the folder you can see that it's all uh, 480 images I think for my video but it is how many frames do you have so I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open it from here so you can see that in my folder it created the whole video so I'm just gonna click and drag it in here into the media pool and when I go to the cut section here I'm just gonna drag it in here and now if we press play you're gonna see that the video is created but it's kind of laggy because this EXR format is kind of it renders the colors more accurate and you can play around with it a bit more it's kind of an HDR look if you want it's not that flat like um, the JPEG or the PNG so you can see that it created all these clips but if you want them separately you can either just uh, render different sequences so you're not gonna create the cuts in the sequence like we did but you're gonna create multiples that have just one camera and one uh, one shot in them but if you want to cut them further you can go to this edit tab if you've done this like me I'm just gonna click on this plus button to basically see the frames better and you can see that here 
is the start of the new of the next shot so if I stay here and then go back to the cut section is gonna uh, remain in the same spot and if I right click and click on cut you can see that it cut the video and now if we go back to the edit mode we can drag this and basically we'll have uh, empty frames between those so you can manipulate this however you want so now I'm gonna just cut each video and then I'm gonna start editing it so you can add transitions from here effects for example whatever you want so play around with this it's not that hard and for example if I want to add a transition you just drag and drop it here and from these sliders you can make it you can set the length but I'm gonna go back to these and uh, make it like this and now you can see that it created the transition so you can do that with every effect for example if I drag this effect you can apply it to a clip so example for example I applied it and you can see that in here it says FX and if I click on this you're gonna see in the effects tab and from here I can adjust the values and uh, everything and I can uh, delete it if I want to okay so now if you go into these color palette tab from here you're gonna be able to manipulate the contrast the gamma the gain everything basically regarding colors and all sorts of that I'm gonna do this and then you're gonna see the final result okay so this is the final result kind of random but I hope you like this video and you find it useful and if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell notification icon so you can get notified whenever I post any questions you may have leave them down below and I'll see you on the next one have a great day goodbye